What's up y'all, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a video that you helped choose. That's something to be proud of. Basically a couple weeks ago, I was messing around on Instagram stories, showing some pages in my video journal and some ideas I had for future videos. And there was one written there that I thought it was totally random, but it easily got the most responses that night. And a bunch of people said, I wanna see that video. And it was called Songs I Love by Artists I Don't. And so I guess you want me to, uh, be a little bit friendly in today's video, or maybe you're just being shady and you want to know who I usually dislike, but I mean, I feel like you know that. Oh, you know why? Because country music doesn't sound country anymore. So in today's video, I am going to endeavor to talk about my favorite songs from artists that maybe are normally in the doghouse on this channel. <laughs> These are not people that I dislike personally. When I say these are artists I don't love, that doesn't mean like them personally. I'm talking about their output, their music. Uh, uh. I asked people to give me some artists that you think I don't like, and I'll tell you the songs in their discography that I actually think are good. You're all good. I wish you the best of luck in your career. And speaking of things I love, today's video is sponsored by SeatGeek. Live events are officially back, and y'all know everyone and their grandma seems to be on a tour this upcoming summer, and that means you can save $20 off tickets with SeatGeek. Now, if you don't know what SeatGeek is, they are a ticketing app that is super easy to use and can get you the best prices for whatever event, be it, you know, a sporting event or, you know, for us here, probably a country concert that you are looking for. I've got the app right here on my phone and it's far and away the easiest way to buy tickets. You can either browse by what kind of event you're looking for or search for a specific one. Like in my interview with John Party, he said I should go to his show in Nashville in October. So why don't we just look that one up? And there you go. Here's the event and the venue map. You can either search by price or you can click on what part of the venue you were hoping to sit in. You're looking for green. If there's a green dot, it means you're getting a good deal on these tickets. Red would mean you're getting a bad one. It's a super useful app and I've got the hookup for viewers of this channel. You can use the promo code Grady Smith, one word, to get $20 off your tickets. That's 20 bucks off your first purchase of tickets using SeatGeek with my promo code Grady Smith. Also, be sure to click the link in the description and you can download the app and just, you know, go say thanks to SeatGeek. Thank you for sponsoring the video and go see a great show this summer. All right, let's get into this. I asked on Instagram, who is a popular artist you think I always dislike? And I'm not kidding you, probably half the responses are Dustin Lynch. <laughs> The Tullahoma review on this channel is easily the most negative review I have ever posted. I hate that album. But if you recall, in my top hits of 2021 video, I praised the song Thinking About You. That was always my favorite song from Tullahoma. But just to prove to you that I can think, you know, more positive thoughts about someone whose music I generally don't like, I'm gonna give you three other songs that I like from Dustin Lynch. Now, the first one I feel like is kinda obvious because it's the one that everyone points to and is like, what happened to that version of Dustin Lynch? Cowboys and Angels. Cowboys and Angels. Off his first album. I think that's the reason we thought we were gonna have a more traditional spirit in Dustin Lynch and you know, that is not what has come to pass. Number two is a song called Pasadena from his new album. Right there in Pasadena. This was part of those duo of songs with Not Every Cowboy that dropped before Blue in the Sky and it kind of looked like they were trying to mimic the Zach Bryan cover and then those covers went away and then the new ones came in. But I love the song Pasadena. It's got lovely fiddle on it. It does feel kind of breezy and Californian. And then the third one, is kind of more like two and a half. I really like the music on his current single, Party Mode. While I do not love the lyrics, and it does feature a, uh, a doing what we do type line where he says, I'm doing that thing I do. I think musically, it's one of the best things in the mainstream right now. I love the sound of party mode. And I think in general, this is a much less snap tracky production on the new album. So there's three songs I at least kind of like by Dustin Lynch, okay? Probably the next most common answer I got is Luke Bryan. I understand this because I use two videos all the time of Luke Bryan. I use him saying, uh, 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 uh. from that's my kind of night. And I use him twerking because I think it's funny and representative of kind of his hacky persona. He doesn't mind being a vehicle for ridiculousness and bro country. 
he's kind of just here to entertain. I don't think it matters that much to him to really say something with his music, but I don't dislike Luke Bryan as much as you guys think I do. In fact, his last album, Born Here, Live Here, Die Here, I think is a great album. I think I gave it a 7 out of 10. And if you listen to like literally every song that wasn't a single, I like those quite a bit. There's a song on there that I like the most called Little Less Broken. Looks like a moving, just a little less song with us. Looks that has that standard tenor guitar sound that I freaking... I'm such a sucker for, and I think it's a romantic lyric. As far as his older stuff, my favorite Luke Bryan song is Rain is a Good Thing. It's so silly, it makes me laugh. Whiskey makes my baby feel a little frisky. There's a very early track he released. It's the title track of the album, Doing My Thing, that has some of the dumbest lyrics ever. It's literally just, I'm just doing my thing, I'm just doing my thing. Literally, that's it. That's how we got to, you know, we're just doing what we do around here. But the harmonica on that song it sounds traditional and all through his career luke's cut some good songs too i mean roller coaster is one of my favorites i like the song drink a beer he has a really good ear for outside songs i just think as an artist sometimes the winner winner catfish dinner side of luke bryan and the twerking sparkly skinny jeans side of luke bryan outshines that a lot of people said keith urban and i get that i have not been a fan of graffiti you or speed of now part one we're still being threatened with part two but I think Keith, more than most artists, it really feels like there was a dividing line between his early material and his later material. Somewhere around like Fuse or Ripcord, Keith just really stopped singing as much about pain or strife and started being a lot more like, I'm the happy spring break guy and I just want to entertain people and spread the love. And I actually think that's not as interesting of art. But I will say I've never gotten to see him live and everyone says that is where you will really get Keith Urban because he's such a talented guitar player and entertainer. My overall favorite Keith Urban song is probably You'll Think of Me. Take your records, take your freedom, take your memories. I, I really like the pettiness of this song. I actually sometimes theorize that Taylor Swift is very, very, very inspired by this song in particular. There's that whole line where he says, and take your cat and leave my sweater. And he's like telling this girl to just get out of his life, but he's saying, you'll think of me. You'll have this kind of remembrance of our relationship. And I bet you think about me. And is that not like exactly all too well? We're dealing with knitted materials and cats and remembering someone. I'm just saying. I really like uh, Raining on Sunday. Pray that it's raining on Sunday. I think that's a very sexy, cool song. And I love where the blacktop ends. That's probably my other favorite. That song almost reminds me of Any Man of Mine by Shania Twain, and it's fun and stompy and fiddly. Even Someone Like You, that was one of my early memories of even ever seeing a country music video. And I was like, this guy's got weird hair, but I really like that song. Basically, I liked countryer slash sadder Keith more than I like elderly pop star Spring Break Keith. Okay, a bunch of comments say Kelsey Ballerini. I, I don't think I've ever disliked Kelsey Ballerini that much. I feel like I gave her last album a pretty fair shake. I don't like her poppier tendencies, but I've always thought she's a pretty good writer. I hate love songs. I love that song, and I... You know, should have known that because I love it, it would not be a hit on the charts, which it wasn't. I hate catching bouquets, the honeymoon phase. I really loved on her last album, Love and Hate. We used to be so happy, didn't we? I think that's a great track, and I, I even like the writing on LA. I loved the acoustic version of Ballerini more than I liked that other album, Kelsey. I just generally don't think a lot of her music is especially country and seems to be much more inspired by pop. But for some people, if they hear you say something's not country, they just assume you hate the music and see no value in it. But I don't know, those are my thoughts. Another name I'm seeing a lot is Jason Aldean. Yeah, I think he has been on autopilot for a while and I'm pretty tough on most of his music over these last couple albums. But if you go back a decade ago, I had the exact opposite feeling. When I lived in New York, I felt like he was really written off in this elitist way as just making pedestrian music for the middle Americans that we don't care about. I loved like tattoos on this town. I really liked the song Fly Over States. Just a bunch of square cornfields and wheat farms. Man, and I thought that was an important message that they're not just flyover states. Early Jason, the, the one two punch of Amarillo Sky. He just takes the tractor another round and pulls a plow. And why? 
High on his first album. Those were incredibly likable songs. I just think Jason is so inconsistent as a singles artist because you get so many junk tracks like We Back or They Don't Know, Burning It Down. I can leave those. But then you get stuff like You Make It Easy or you get stuff like Drowns the Whiskey and there's like a, also quality there too. Now I was just looking at his discography right here and it's interesting. He might be one of these artists where his album cuts sort of shade how I think of his singles. Whereas it's usually very different. Usually people's singles are these big things that get in the way of, are you hearing the complexity on their album? But looking at that, I'm like, actually he's got way more variety in his singles than most artists. It's just the other nine tracks on each album all feel like kind of carbon copies of like, we out here in the sticks and they don't understand us. And you know, noted that I've learned something today or realized something about how I think about Jason Aldean. Also, I remembered how much I hate 1994. Wow. Maren Morris, she's come up a few times. Yeah, Maren Morris, I I don't know. I've always just felt sort of neutral on Maren Morris. I love her song Background Music on her new album. I mentioned that in my little mini review. But we're only human. On her first album, there's a track called that's like saying drunk girls don't cry. Drunk girls don't cry. That's like saying drunk girls don't cry. Almost feels like, like beach rock a little bit. And it's funny. If it was the first time, I would understand. But it's the third time, you got a second chance. And I, I like a little bit of sass in country music. I like that it's a genre that invites you to laugh. So I really enjoy drunk girls. It's definitely popular, but... That song's funny. And My Church, in general. I like My Church. I feel like it a little bit missold us an image of who Marin was gonna be musically, but it's a great song. Walker Hayes is on here a lot. Coffee cup, cold and black. Wish she had a little shot of Jack. Go watch my Walker Hayes video. It is like a 20 minute version of me realizing he might have something more to say. Parker McCollum. I don't think I always dislike Parker McCollum. Uh, hell of a year would definitely be one and rest of my life. I like sad Parker. Oh, and Halle Ray Light. I like happy Parker too. Or at least like not totally sad Parker. Feeling a bit misunderstood by some of these because I'm like, do I always hate these people? Does it just seem that way? Or, or is media just so positive that sometimes disliking a song makes it seem negative? Mitchell Tenpenny. Mitchell Tenpenny. Some people don't know when to quit. And that's why they quit. Um, I'm a little stumped with Mitchell Tenpenny because I admit I really didn't like After Drunk Me. I listened to that album that had like Alcohol You Later. And there was something about his breathy singing style. I, I kind of painted him into a corner as just bro-y, disrespectful. He had that song Bitches, which I was very offended by at the time. Well, I don't deal with bitches no more. I don't know, I, I, I'm stumped because I've never really dove in. There are certain artists where I guess first impressions last a lifetime and that's probably not fair, so. Let me know a Mitchell Tenpenny song I should listen to. Brett Young, he's on here too. Okay, speaking of breathy vocals, yeah, not my style, and I'm not into the kind of pandering boyfriend country, and I really don't like his live performance. But there's a song on his Ticket to LA album called Where You Want Me. It's very 70s feeling, and it almost reminds me a little bit of Seven Summers. But it's a sad lyric. He says, you got me where you want me, but baby, you don't want me no more. It's like this relationship's over and it's got this nice kind of post-chorus descending guitar line. And I just think it really works. It's such a cool style. There's another song on that album, The Ship and the Bottle, I think is what it's called. It also kind of puts me in a 70s place. And I like that side of Brett Young. So those are my choices. And probably I would sing along to Sleep Without You if I heard it on the radio. But as long as the night ends with you and the yellow cab shooting me a text ain't coming home soon. Cole Swindell's name came up a bunch. Um, as far as Cole Swindell goes, I think of him very similarly to Luke Bryan. I think they both don't mind being a, a vehicle for some of the big mega songwriters like Dallas Davidson, Rhett Akins, Ben Hayslip, who have a bunch of number ones. But I guess it just feels like I've heard this before. And that's probably the point. It's like, yeah, this is proven successful music that people like to listen to and vibe with. But I probably judge that more harshly. Like I'm way harder on stuff that feels derivative than stuff that feels fresh and bad. I'd rather something be fresh and bad than like same and fine. But I'm not here to say why I think I'm hard on Cole Swindell. 
There are a number of songs of his that I actually like a lot. Probably the main one is Break Up in the End. I'd introduce you to my mom and dad. I think that song is beautiful. I've always really, really liked that song. And then you gotta admit that She Had Me at Heads Carolina is totally a bop. Even if I think it's more a bop because of the original song. I do think they're pretty successful in retooling it and turning it into a more modern, fresh story. And it's gonna introduce the original to a bunch of people as well. So those would be my two choices. Okay, Danny Shay is on here. And uh, I feel like my answer for this is obvious. I really like the song, What Keeps You Up at Night. Girl, I wanna be what keeps you up at night. I think that song is a jam. It feels almost like Fran for Daylight by Rascal Flatts to me. I like the harmony on it, and it's kind of almost like purposely overproduced, but it's a really cool vocal effect. And I honestly love on Speechless the vocals going into that second chorus where Shay does like, and I'm speechless. It's just this long, unusual entry into a chorus. Always love that. And then I guess for the last one, I'll do Thomas Rhett. And I know I'm leaving out a bunch, but there's literally hundreds and hundreds of responses here. Thomas Rhett's another one that I don't think I dislike the way you all apparently think I dislike Thomas Rhett. I quite liked Country again, as you all know. I think there's a lot of songs on there, like You Heard especially, that I think are just great songs about growing up and they're a little more organic in their instrumentation. I really enjoy so much of that album. But my favorite song of Thomas Rhett's is actually probably one of his poppiest. I love Life Changes. Ain't it funny how I just think Life Changes is a song about real life. I enjoy the themes that kind of go all over the place of adoption and uh, his wife having a bunch of followers on Instagram and there's a humor in it and there's just unusual wordplay. Like where else are you gonna hear the word Uganda in a country song? I think it's cool. You're gonna have a grandkid yep. from Uganda. That's right, we're adopting. And that super basic line of ain't it funny how life changes is backed up by these super specific verses, which I just think makes it all come to life. Even like the, the music in it is really whimsical and fun. And I almost think it's good because it goes so far. It's not trying to be that middle road where it's just country enough that it could be considered a country song. It's just more willing to be a pop song. But yeah, that's it. That's all I'm gonna do today. If people really like this video, maybe we could revisit it. Maybe we could do the reverse of songs I hate by artists I love. That would be interesting because even your favorite artist has some duds that you don't like. Let me know if there are other songs you think I'm missing or other artists I should maybe cover. If I did a follow up ever, uh, there's merch, like the Just Doing What We Do shirts uh, in the shop now. And we got prints of the big thicket honky tonk painting. And I love you guys and check out SeatGeek. Thanks for sponsoring all the end of video things. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.